Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Redshift tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at doing some anti-aliasing with max subsample intensity and uh, just solving some of those issues that you may be running into if you've got high intensity highlights versus a darker background. And hey, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. Now I've set up a scene here in Houdini, however if you are using Maya, the settings that I'm going to be talking about, uh, sample filtering which you'd find under your output tab in the Redshift settings. In Houdini you'll find it under your Redshift ROP, under Redshift and then also under settings and sampling options and then we're just looking at sample filtering. So here is our rendered image at 100% crop and hopefully this will show up on YouTube and what you can see is we're getting some aliasing on our light which is visible and then we've got this pillar here on the right hand side which is also going, getting some aliasing down the highlighted edge of it. On the left hand side I've got another pillar which the light is not linked to just so it can get some GI reflections and I'll go into why I'm doing that in a second. So one of the things we can do is I just start the render there is look at our max subsample intensity. So at the moment it's set to four, which is its default. If we set it down to one, what it does is it's gonna clear up those edges essentially by clamping the light energy. So what you'll notice between say this image and then if I go back up to four samples is that we will lose a little bit of the value of that highlight because it's clamping all its maximum ranges down to one, whereas we were essentially over bright on these with a value of four. So this is worth knowing because if you're working in HDR, um, so if you're doing things like bloom in post, this will affect that. This can also have an effect on your depth of field highlights. I'll show an example from the Redshift docs because um, I don't have a better one here. But if you're looking to do these sorts of highlights and you're not getting the result that you want, what you'll probably want to consider doing is possibly for these edges, if you're looking to get these highlights in depth of field, you may want to have separate render layers uh, for each of the objects that you want to use with these different max subsample intensities. So that's pretty straightforward essentially reducing it to one will fix your problem. Increasing it over four, I haven't really had a, a use for this. I'm doing quite a bit of this in the project I'm working on right now because it is uh, black and white for a lot of it and it does have a lot of very bright highlights. So I am using this quite a bit. Um, in that situation, it's not been too much of an issue because I'm not doing too much comp stuff. However, if you do have an environment that's got GI rays, you might also run into the situation where your secondary rays are ca causing aliasing. So if I switch my camera angle, so it's probably going to be difficult to see on the video, but this foreground pillar here is now quite aliased. Um, zooming in won't give us a very good representation of that because obviously it's going to alias more as we zoom in. So I'm going to try and keep it at 100% crop. You can see a little bit of it around this area here. And essentially what's happening is the light is hitting this pillar in the, on the top here and then bouncing and hitting this one here which is also highly specular. So again the same thing we can do is if we just run the render we can reduce the secondary ray intensity down to 1.0 and it's cleaned up those rays being bounced onto the secondary object that's only receiving GI rays. Another thing that you'll also notice is if I go if I save that, is that, you'll notice that we get a lot more noise in the foreground as it samples up. And whereas if we start the render again with the lower secondary ray intensity, that actually cleans up a lot better. So it's not necessarily something that you would always want to use for your secondary bounces. But if you're noticing a lot of fireflies on these secondary bounced areas with, um, with high specularity, this is something that you can actually reduce to help fix that. This doesn't apply only to reflections, it will also apply to refractions as well. That's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.